Hello everyone, this is a part 3 of the 3D printed excavator build. In this part I will show you how to connect all the electronic components together and the final assembly of the model. Well, let's get started. As I said before, we will start with the connecting the electronic components. This part of the video may be boring, but it will be useful for people who will build this model. So if you are watching this video just for fun, you can skip this part to the time shown at the bottom part of the screen. To control the model, I will use these small RPM controllers. Since the model doesn't use powerful motors, I will use these RPM controllers for all motors and linear actuators. To control the model, you need at least 8 controllers, but I will use them for possible additional functions. For example, before editing this video, I already installed the tool changer, and I will show it in the end of the video. Well, I cut off the connectors that needed to connect the battery and soldered all the controllers to the prototyping board for easier connection all these controllers to the battery. Eight main controllers have direct connection, and two additional ones are connected using a small switch so that I can turn them off when they are not needed. I'm also designed and printed a holder for these controllers to keep them compact. After testing the placement of this unit inside the model, I decide to make it even more compact. I glued the small connector to, to the body, then I cut the wires that went to the motors and soldered them to these connectors. In my opinion, it looks nice. Don't forget to remove the red wires from the cables that go to the receiver. You must remove the red wires from all cables except one. The red wire sends power to the receiver. The receiver only needs one power source. Otherwise, we can just simply burn it out. Here I soldered the connectors to the wires from the rotary connector. Now I can connect the unit with the motor controllers and do the first test drive for the chassis. Here is how I connected everything. I'm using the first four speed controllers to control motors inside the chassis. Without the camera, I soldered all the wires to the linear actuators on the arm. I also added small connectors to the actuators. This will allow me to quickly disconnect them if I will need this. Also, don't forget to add a grease to the arm axis. More information about this you can find inside the assembly instruction. At this point of the video editing, I realized that I hadn't made a video about setting up the transmitter, so we will have some inserts from the near future. In the assembly instruction, I recommend a 10 channel transmitter from the Fly Sky, but for myself, I bought a 12 channel transmitter from the Radio Link have more channels for some add-ons in the future. This transmitter a little bit different comparison to FlySky, but not a lot, because all transmitters have similar functions inside, therefore it's not a big difference. So let's begin. As default, most of transmitters have first four channels attached to the disk sticks. Channel 2 I'm using to move boom up and down and channel 1 to rotate body left and right. On the left stick I'm using channel 3 for moving stick forward and backward and channel 4 to tilt back at left and right. As I said before, switches on the top do not attach to any channels, therefore you need to go in the AUX channels menu and attach them to different channels that you need. 
So this is how I attached my And this is how everything working after setup. On the back side of the transmitter I have these pinhead potentiometers. I using them for air riding. Switch A I am using to lift a blade up and down. Switch C I am using to operate with swing bracket. And as I make in this video from some future in the timeline, I using this switch B to operate with mechanism inside a tool tool changing mechanism. It's allow me to attach and detach a buckets. Another good feature of this transmitter that it will have built-in trucks mode, and this is how it's working. I was added a channels that I am using for grinding in this truck mode, and this allow me to use one button to spin both trucks in forward or backward directions, and another button to spin them in opposite direction. In my opinion, it's more comfortable than in comparison to situation when you using one button to control in one truck. For example, I can use my right hand to ride in forward and backward. And I can use my left hand to control an a blade. And now it's time to back to final assembly of the excavator.
Ok, at this point the model is finished, and now it's time for the first test ride. I want to say that at the first the model doesn't seem very easy to control, but after I've done a few practical rides, I became much better at controlling the model, so if you don't control this model at the first, don't give up and just keep practicing. As I said before, after first rides, I installed a tool changer on a model, which allowed me to change the buckets. Also, I already seen that a drive sprocket. This will reduce the risk of the truck belts falling off when you are driving in the sequence. In the end, I want to say that I have already designed a village chassis for this model, and later I plan to rebuild my model into a village version. I think this will give me a new interesting experience in controlling this model. So if you want to stay up to the date with the news around this model, subscribe to the channel and join my Facebook group. See you soon. Good luck.